Hello guys and welcome to a new video. Today's is about edge masks. I know it's been done one million times, hasn't it? But have you actually found uh, one reliable method for EV? I haven't, and that's why I decided to make this video. Let's take a look on uh, what options do we have. I have uh, prepared two models, one hard surface and one uh, organic, which is our Suzanne. And let's look at the possibilities that we have for the for the edge mask. Let's switch to cycles renderer because that one is pretty straightforward. Let's also switch to rendered view so we can actually see what we are doing. And the first possibility is uh, the pointiness socket of the geometry node. So we have this information on pointiness. And let's plug it through a color ramp so we can uh, so we can tune it a bit with the contrast. So plug in the to base color, and now if we play around with the with the color ramp, uh, let's also assign it to Suzanne to actually see it on the organic model as well. And now you can see that we have the we have kind of uh, edges or the convex surfaces. I think it's convex, right? But uh, on the hard surface model, there isn't pretty much, we don't have pretty much any control over it. So that's not really, not really an uh, option for on the organic model. It's working, working pretty well. So that's a, that's an option for the, for the organic models, but for the hard surface models, not so much. And we, if we invert it, we have the concave surfaces. If we invert the, the color ramp. So now let's get rid of it and uh, at a bevel node so we have to actually combine the bevel node with a normal output of the of the geometry via a, via a vector math so let's add a vector math node plug in the normal and uh, change it to change it to cr dot product that will make a scalar value of the of the vector and uh, now we have a great control over the edges let's actually invert the color ramp so we can we can see the masked edges and now we have a great control on the hard surface model of over the the thickness, let's say, of the of the edge mask. The only problem, let's say, would be that it doesn't distinct between uh, convex and concave surfaces. You have uh, it uh, kind of uniformly uh, marks all the all the edges. And on top of that, uh, let's say on uh, on Susan, it doesn't look doesn't look very well. So this is very usable for the for the hard surface models. You have great control over the over the final result. But uh, there are some limitations to it. Now, next possibility is ambient occlusion. This works both for uh, for cycles and for uh, EV. The problem, the only problem with the ambient occlusion is that it's pretty computational demanding. But the results are great from the from the ambient occlusion. So we can also switch it. If you switch the inside check, you get the, you get the uh, convex surfaces masked out and uh, you have uh, also a lot of control by changing the distance. So this looks pretty, pretty well. And it works also, also in, uh, in EV. So let's switch to EV. And you have the you have to enable it in the render view to actually see the see the result. The only problem with EV is that the ambient occlusion is a screen space effect, and when you move the object out of the screen, you can see on the bottom it the the ambient occlusion is actually disappearing. And if you have an object that's uh, static, or if you have a static scene. Our object that's perfectly in the center of the view, then it's okay, but uh, it can create this weird, weird effect. So it's usable, but uh, there are some limitations to it. Now we get actually to the method that I that I found out, and it's not from my head. I got inspired by the Blender 3.4 splash screen demo. 
I I opened it up uh, because I, I wanted to see what the what the guys did there, and uh, I was walking through walking through the scene, and uh, I discovered the floor panels. Let's uh, let's move on to it. The scene is crazy complex, and uh, my computer is quite slow. So let's isolate the isolate the floor panel. Uh, invert the selection. Actually, let's zoom on it. Invert the selection, and I will hide the the rest of the the rest of the scene. Okay, and object uh, hide hide selected. Okay, now let's switch to preview mode and uh, let's zoom on in. Do you see the the beautiful the beautiful edges? And uh, I wondered how how they did it. So I I checked the material. You can you can see that it's uh, some uh, group. And when you when you open it, it's this this crazy node setup. Yeah, they they are they are on a, on another level. The guys who did that. There are also uh, detailing groups, uh, their own triplanner groups. So this is this is insane. And I tried to orient in it uh, by searching for the metallic mask, and I found out they are using an attribute, an edge angle attribute. But uh, this attribute is actually not a default attribute. They have to get it somehow. So. I checked the modifiers and they are actually using a bevel and the geometry nodes modifier. So let's check the let's check the geometry nodes tab. And uh, let's see let's see what they what they have there. So they use a store named attribute and uh, they plug their assigned angle value. So let's actually try to replicate it for, uh, for our model. Now let's, uh, let's switch to rendered view and uh, select our model. Let's delete the ambient occlusion nodes, uh, select, the, select our model and uh, assign it a geometry nodes modifier. Let's make a new one and call it a store named attribute. Or store attribute. Okay, go to geometry nodes. Now add the store named attribute node. Plug it between the geometry and let's search for the edge angle. Okay, we have to plug in the signed angle value, which gives us uh, from negative one to one values, uh, depending on the angle of the edges. And let's name the attribute that we will store an edge angle. Let's also assign it to Suzanne. Geometry nodes and uh, store attribute. And now let's return to shading tab and let's assign it. Uh, let's assign the, let's add the ad attribute node actually. Okay. And uh, edge angle attribute. Okay. Now, if we plug in the factor into the base color, let's see the result. And now we can see that it's very similar to the pointiness output of the geometry. We see the very dark areas. They are actually negative value and we have to separate them. Let's plug, let's put in a map range node. And for the negative values, so from say minus 0 0.01 to minus 1, this will uh, make out our... Uh, uh, our concave mask and let's duplicate the map range and uh, for the positive values from uh, 0 to 1 this will make our convex masks or edge masks from from actually from 0 to 1 and let's plug it into the base color and now we have the the edges or the or the convex surfaces the another trick that I saw from the from the from the demo was actually to use a math node and set to power. And now when you change the exponent, you have a control over the contrast contrast of the mask. So this is a great trick. It's uh, extremely fast, probably faster than uh, than uh, than color ramp. And also when you can go past one value in the map range to get even more control. 
So let's also uh, plug in the power for the for the uh, crevices or for the concave uh, concave parts. And now you have a great control. Another thing we can do to further uh, fine tune the mask on the hard surface is actually to add a bevel modifier, move it on top of the geometry nodes and uh, change the amount of the bevel to something reasonable like five millimeters for such a model. Let's plug in the, plug in the convex mask. And the trick here is to use actually two segments and to change the profile to a value of 0 0.75. Now when you zoom in, you have a beautiful uniform uh, edge masks and you have a control over the, over the, let's say, amount or the diameter radius of the, of the bevel or of the, of the mask. And uh, also for the organic, organic surface, it works, uh, it works pretty well. So this is actually a great solution because it's universal for both EV and cycles. You have uh, great control over uh, hard surface uh, models and uh, it works it works well for the organic surfaces as well. So this now becomes my, uh, my favorite solution for the edge masks. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you for watching. If you like the content I'm creating, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified when I release a new video. See you at our next project.